Alaska and catch a tan. We have loggers and they do not look like these ESPN athletes, if you know what I'm saying, ladies. So over here to the right. Sweetheart, what are you doing? I said, what are you doing? Here in the Tongass National Forest, the biggest national forest in the country. Brown bear are very dangerous. They are very aggressive. You're gonna to have to fight to chase a, a brown bear. With a with a brown, you have to defend yourself. Oh. The berries won't kill you, but they'll get you sick. Really? Oh, he's beautiful. Oh, come on, little guy. When you get off the ship, there's actually a map here that shows you where everything really is around here. And we are about to head out on a walking, or no, a hiking tour. Where? Uh, Tungas Rainforest. So we're going to go do that. It's a three hour um, excursion. So we're going to check that. Dock one is empty right now, but that's right in front of us. And at Dock one or near it, Salmon Landing Market. Where, where I'm pointing over here to the right. That's like a mini mall for tourists. There's all kinds of good things in there. I like that place. If you get cold or don't want the sun or whatever, um, that's a good place to hang out in. All the buildings have little roofs over them because it rains a lot here. Oh, and by the way, a lot of what I'm telling you is what people ask. Not just stuff I know, but what people ask. Which is, ladies, there's a quilt shop. <laughs> I don't know. Upstairs is Salmon Landing. When you get back, good place to eat. The fish house over there to the right and back in the corner, the crab grill. People always say, where can we eat? Yeah, so those those are good. And the quilt shop's upstairs at this end. Okay, we got Lumberjack Show over here on the right. This is fun, but it's not legitimate. See, when I say, look, look, standing on the corner, they're facing them out. There you go. So it's not legitimate. We don't have any Lumberjacks in Alaska. We have loggers, and they do not look like these ESPN athletes. You know what I'm saying, ladies? <laughs> so over here to the right, left, on the right, in front of us and behind us, this is all built over the water, all of downtown. So downtown built over the water. You actually had to go in a rowboat to this church up here, St. John's Episcopal, about 100 years ago. All these buildings, when I came here in 1980, people were like, oh, they're haunted, I hear voices. No, 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 children playing underneath them at low tide. They <laughs> they put some metal plates in there to block them out. Like, no, you're scaring people. Get out of here. Okay, on the left, Pioneer Cafe. You've got Alaska Crate Company. You've got some sushi place. Oh, and Crazy Wolf Studio. This is legitimate little pricey, but it's all legit native stuff. On the right, look where I'm pointing. You're going to see a red building and a red bridge down there. That's the other entrance exit to Creek Street. Creek Street is our historical district, or to be tacky, the old warehouses. Remember back... <laughs> Remember, in the olden days, they told all these bad girls, you get out of our neighborhood. They made them go live here. That was their district. The last lady stayed until 1975, lived in her house, and left it as a museum to the town so you can go tour it. Look over here on the right. That's the other entrance exit. Now, when you get on there, see all those people hanging over? Look at my hand. It's a wooden boardwalk goes like this around the creek. You look down there, you're going to see salmon and probably sea lions up in there eating them. So yeah, and there's a museum over here to the right. That's legitimate, doesn't cost much. But when I say legit, it's not, oh, look for the tourists. No, it's real good stuff. It's real. So if you look to the right and to the left in front of us, you're gonna see how small our city blocks are and how downtown is like a tic-tac-toe pattern. I mean, it is easy to find your way around here. Look on the right again, you got Mexican, Chinese, Subway, all kinds of places to eat. Now, if you even think you're lost, Creek Street's a good place to go. It's not more than 12 minute walk from the farthest point back to your ship, but all you have to do is look up. You see sky on the other side of the buildings is your ship and water. You know, see down there's where we came from, way back there to the left. You see mountains, don't go that way. Now look there on the left, there's your ship. Look how close and small everything was. Do not be afraid to go explore. You'll learn that on your trip too. The ships are always like, we might leave you. We might leave you. You better hurry up and be back here. No, they want you to hang out close to their jewelry stores. <laughs> look, I'm serious. <laughs> look look on the left is our cop shop and it's only a block away from the dock. That means you all have to behave. 
No, I'm just kidding. You're a tourist. <laughs> You're a tourist. <laughs> You're so golden. Excuse me, officer. I'd like to break in over here. Oh, let me unlock that for you, sir. <laughs> so, this boring end of town, we've got a couple of really tall buildings here. One of them, actually both of them, the people up on the hills. That Dolly? That is Dolly. Sorry, it's a friend of mine. Donald's. So, I should have honked. So, <laughs> if you look up to your right, you're going to see there's a hill up there. These two tall buildings are the only ones in town because the people up on the hill said, wait a minute, you're not taking away our view. And they outlawed them. We are not allowed to have any more than five stories here now. You know what else is illegal? And this is the whole state. You're not going to see any billboards. We don't have any billboards. Yeah. Alaska doesn't like that. So when you come, and this is very important, when you come back, always, always come in a different month than you came before. If you were here in June, every building we passed back there, including these tall ones, would have eagles on it. There would be eagles on the light poles over there on the left. The reason is the salmon aren't here yet. Look at that view. Eagles, because the salmon aren't here yet. King salmon come in June. And the eagles are eating mice and rats and squirrels and minks and martins and my cat until the fish came in or come in. And that's why we don't see them now, because after the fish spawn, what do they do? Anybody? They die. Salmon go upstream and spawn, then they die. So if you're a fish and you're laying around in that creek, and you're like, oh, I can't, I can't fight you anymore, come get me. Those eagles will go, okay, and they're out of here. Yeah. So they didn't go anywhere, they're just not right hanging around where we are. These are our barge companies, two out of three of them. If you look around, every vehicle, every building material, all the clothes, all the food, everything comes off those barges. You want to order a vehicle up here, $2,000 freight. You want to go to Seattle, Costco, load up a pallet, 500 freight. This is Alaska Marine Highway. And I'm looking at one of our ferry boats over there in the shipyard getting worked on, actually, two of them. Alaska Marine Highway is our highway. We're on an island. And if you want to go anywhere and take your vehicle, the ferry. Or you can fly out of here. That's it. So Alaska Marine Highway, all of the ferries, and you'll see them on your trip, are named after glaciers. And the reason I want to tell you about them is many, many people come up here every year in the cruise ship, and the next year, they'll come up here on the ferry. If you're close enough, you can drive your car to Bellingham, Washington, jump on. You don't want to, you can fly there and jump on. They have little state rooms. You can put a tent up in the solarium. They've got cafeteria, everything. But the thing about the ferry is freedom of itinerary. You find one of our towns you don't like so much or one you really liked, ferry. You can skip it, you can spend more time there. Okay, right now, stop and look way, way up there to the left, or way to our left. That's where you're going later. Isn't that gorgeous? Just love it. Beautiful, huh? So, the rock, everywhere you look, you're seeing rock. The name of this island is Ravilla Gigato. We call it Ravilla. We call it the rock because it is. It's 35 miles wide by 50 miles long. And it's... Um, pretty much solid rock. They told you that everywhere you're going is in the inside passage, right? I bet they didn't tell you that you're also going through the Alexander Archipelago. Southeast Alaska, and a lot of people say, what, what river is this? No, no, no. No, Southeast Alaska is comprised of about a thousand islands because the Alexander Archipelago is an under ocean volcanic mountain range. So we have so many islands between us and the open ocean, people do think it's a big river. No, all this rock is volcanic rock. Remember Jurassic Park, remember Hawaii? They filmed it in Hawaii, how lush and green everything was. Well, that's like here, you've got all the minerals in this rock. And we use it for everything, by the way. D1 gravel, retaining walls, property petitions. We ship barges of rock down south and they ship us barges of dirt. All these minerals in this volcanic rock, plus all of our rain. When we left the dock on the other side of the building, you'll see it when we get back down there, there's a rain gauge. We have more rain in this town than anywhere else on the entire North American continent. And when I say more, I mean nearly 13 feet a year. Over 300 days a year, that's what I was talking about, winter, wind and rain, sideways. Over 300 days a year of some kind of precipitation. So all that water, all these minerals, and extended hours of daylight in the summer, look, we get like four hours of darkness in the peak of summer. Anchorage only had two. And um, all the light, all the rain, all the minerals, you are looking at trees growing out of solid rock. 
things grow here four times as fast as anywhere else. And I don't know if he's going to mention it to you or not, so if he does, act surprised. But you are in one of three temperate rainforests on Earth. You are in our nation's largest national forest, almost 17 million acres. So some of the guides mention that, some don't. They're just telling you the forest stuff, so I don't know. But anyway, that's where you're at. That's where most of your trip is, through the Tongass National Forest. So our island, Ketchikan, I should say, our town, is the fourth largest in Alaska. You got Anchorage, and then Fairbanks, then Juneau, then Ear. And um, it's a lot of green, a lot of forest. We love it. Deer, middle of the road. Open your eyes. It's a little baby girl. Where's her mama? She was hanging out with another one her size, plus two moms. Look on the right, there's another one. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi, sweetheart. What are you doing? Nice what are you doing? Are you just eating? What's the ones over there doing? Okay, here's the thing, folks. August 1st is deer season, and somebody tells them, because I was seeing like four a day, and now we're seeing one or two, if that. We're like, so we haven't seen any more this morning. Hi, sweetie. Anyway, so we were seeing black bears too, but now it's the end of the fishing season. All the salmon are in the creek and they're all dying. So the bears aren't here now. They're not hanging out on the road. You want to see a bear? Go to my son's house every night at 1030. His neighbor, I'm so, it's right in town. It's right where you all walk. Because his neighbors don't tie up the trash. A few moments later. But Ketchikan is your first stop. We're right down here. Okay. You're in the Tongass National Forest, the biggest national forest in the country. 17 million acres. It was made a national forest in the early 1900s. It's over 100 years old. Like I said, this is just a teeny tiny little part of it. It's 570 something miles all the way up to the Canadian border. You continue down in the United States, it attaches to a park called Wrangell St. Elias National Park. That's the biggest national park in the system. Then it continues to what's called the Chugash National Forest in the Anchorage area. So this is one of the largest interconnected protected areas in the country. Awesome. From here all the way up to Anchorage. Lake recreational area. We're right here. We're gonna visit at least two of these decks. Hopefully we'll get to the middle deck. The trail's about 1.1 miles. It'll take us about an hour and three quarters to two hours to do that. So you're going to be traveling about 2.2 miles, which we won't see here. <laughs> I have seen those in my work life, and they are pretty magnificent, I must admit. People will say we don't have brown bear on this island, but we do. On the eastern side of the island, they come across from the mainland, swim the channel, and come across the mainland. So you occasionally you'll see a brown bear on the eastern side of the island. They don't come to this side, but we do have them on the island. But we do have our little... Black bear. Brown bear are very dangerous. They are very aggressive. You're going to have to fight to, to chase a, a brown away. A Is it black, better just to stand still? Uh, with, a, with a brown, you have to defend yourself. Oh. You have to curl up in a ball and defend yourself. With a black, they are, our little bears are very precocious. I liken them to little precocious children. <laughs> if we see one, I want you guys to just stare at it and back, go backwards very slowly. You're not going to run. Do you know why? I'll chase you. Because running equals food. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be, that's the bear perceives your food. Mm -hmm. um, you just keep walking backwards. I have some bear spray. I'm not a big fan of it because the only person that I've ever known to try using it is accidentally sprayed themselves so. in the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I will try to, I will do the same thing as you. I'll back away and I'll try to make a little noise. They're, you know, they're not, they're not very aggressive. So generally they take off when they see a group this big. I see somebody yeah. pointing yeah. out the berries. So we'll talk about the berries. These are called bunch berries. They are edible if you want to try them. They're not very sweet, they're not very tart, and they're very, they're very mealy. People will use these to make a jelly, but you need to put a ton of sugar in it. <laughs> so I don't know what you're tasting anyway. But what are they called again? Bunch berries. Bunch bunch berries. berries. They're sometimes okay. called dwarf dogwood because if you look at the leaves, they look like oh, dogwood do. leaves. Yeah. Yeah. That's, oh, one of our, that's one of our indigenous, on, that is our indigenous oh, slug. Oh, 
Come on. Yeah, he's, hey. <laughs> <laughs> he's very That's good. A <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's, oh, that's, that's, that's so funny. funny. <laughs> I know. Yeah. We passed somebody oh. the other day who had an umbrella. It was terrifying. Usually, oh. usually they want to get pet by, petted I by know. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. He's just very suspicious of strangers. So, you know. Oh. He's so cute. Is that an Airedale? No, he is. He's a miniature golden doodle. Really? Oh, he's beautiful. Oh, so. oh, come on, little guy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. 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 He's afraid to venture. What's his name? Uh, tuck. What? Tuck? Tuck. Yeah. It's like, it's like Tuck is running yeah. the gauntlet. Yeah. 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 He's like, hi, Tuck. I'm so pleased. You guys have a good day. You too. You too. This is called Devil's Club. The berries won't kill you, but they'll get you sick. Interesting thing about this is the bears like this, and they eat everything. They eat the leaves, the bark, and the berries. The locals take the bark, and they make a salve out of it that's supposed to be good for rashes and things like that. Mm. The reason this is a bad plant for humans, being the avid fisherman that I am, when I see a fishing spot, I don't care what's between me and that fishing spot, I go. <laughs> when I first moved to Anchorage, I found it, but I thought it was a great spot. There was a whole bunch of these plants that I had never seen before, and I was in a short sleeve shirt, and I went like this. Look at all the spines on there. Yeah. yeah. Leaves and bark. Yeah. They will embed themselves in your skin, and they take a week or so to get rid of. And I'm slightly allergic to them, I found it. So, oh, oh. so that's why we want to avoid that. We have one other point in the summer. We got a lot of snow melt. I mean, in the spring, we had snow melt and more rain. So, that washes these blue slobs down and into the stream. And then you see that turn there? That's a very sharp turn. They cannot make it past that turn. So those aren't beavers or anything. That is just a bunch of logs that came into the river in the spring. And they just get thrown out. Like, that turn, like on a merry-go-round. You know, when you get thrown out there. So, let's talk about catch a can. Kirkapan was first founded as a customs port in the 1890s. The rainforest is important mainly for two reasons for me. It generates 15 to 20 percent of the oxygen that we breathe. <laughs> the other thing is the diversity of life. The rainforests have the biggest diversity of life. In this forest, we have, like I said, 25 plus different berries of different kinds. We have 37 plus varieties yeah, of We have 50 plus varieties of the mosses. And we have a yes, unique, unique yeah. rainforest and what kind of life it is. In the spring, you would see some really fresh green tips on these. Mm -hmm. People will take those tips and make jellies, jams, and sauces, things like that. Hmm. But there's a couple clever people in Juneau. Somebody's making spruce tip beer. Oh, oh boy. wow. So I'm going to ask you a favor. We can't get that here. If you're in Juno and you find spruce tip beer and you're a beer person, have a beer for me. <laughs> and, and if you're not a beer person and you like ice cream, there's actually people making ice cream out of these spruce tips too. Cool. So I like ice cream. If you're not a beer person, then have some ice cream for me because we can't get that up here. Logistically, we do have something like Amazon Prime, but it, Amazon Prime takes two weeks, not two days. <laughs> oh, wow. It's not going to save me if I forget my anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> you have to think very carefully about things. It is planning. Like building a house. Mm -hmm. Even with the supply chain issues going on, it took 12 months for my son-in-law to get windows for the house he's building. 13 months for him to get a roofing system. Anything heavy, for example, we didn't, when we moved up here, we left all our furniture. We couldn't find what we wanted here. We'd have to buy it in Seattle, which we did. But now, we have to fly down to Seattle. We have to deliver it to the barge. We have to make sure it gets wrapped, and then they put it on the barge. Anything heavy like that has to be shipped up here. 
Right now we have only one airline service in Alaska. They're very dependable, but it's just one airline. Mm -hmm. they don't have, a lot of times they don't have the flights to do. We have a hospital. They can do small things, like knee surgery, the kids are little babies. But if you have a heart emergency, and even in COVID, most people have to be flown down to Seattle. Seattle's actually closer by flight than Anchorage is. Seattle's about an hour and a half on the airplane. Anchorage is about four hours. We have this one supermarket, Safeway, and a place called A&P. Mm -hmm. Not the A&P you think of, it's called Alaska and Proud. <laughs> they have their sale, their sale start on the Thursday. If you don't get there by Saturday afternoon or Sunday morning, you're waiting until next Thursday to get what you need. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you know, there's all these little things you have to think about. Mm -hmm. Like I need some, I have, when I left Florida, I was having some dental work done. I needed to have a post for it. An implant. Doctor said, well, I can't do it anymore. You can get it finished in Ketchikan. Well, get the Ketchikan, there's no oral surgeons in Ketchikan. No, I have to go to Seattle or anything. Mm -hmm. There's all these things you have to think about. Mm -hmm. Biggest of these root systems I've ever seen. This was a big old spruce tree. I look at that, and to me, that's nature. That is nature in its... In its all its majesty, mm -hmm. I could describe this to a sculptor, a painter, a metal worker, and tell them what I want them to make. And I don't think in their wildest imagination could they duplicate this. To me, that's very majestic.